I've been involved in pro-Palestinian activism for many years, and it there there's been talk of sanctions and boycotts for a long time, and of course, with the South African uh, experience of fighting apartheid, I was involved in efforts around sanctions, boycotts, divestment back in the mid '80s against South Africa, and it was a it was a strategy which worked then for South Africa. It allowed for peaceful social change to occur for the the black majority to uh, you know lead the country um, and you know destroy the you know uh, dismantle peace peace finally peacefully dismantle the apartheid regime and so in the wake of Gaza um, in the wake of a growing movement of sanctions boycotts joining all sorts of Israelis Jews around the world activists around the world it seemed really impossible not to join the boycott. And so I wrote back to Tel Aviv and declined the invitation uh, and said, thanks for inviting me. I can't do it. I've thought a lot about it. This isn't about your festival. This isn't about you as a wonderful queer filmmaker. People should come see his film, which is going to be an inside out. The point is the state. The point is the Israeli state who continues with impunity to slaughter queer Palestinians along with all the other Palestinians they're slaughtering. The, their bombs don't seem to ask questions about sexuality. So when Israeli stands up in public forums and says, we're the only place in the Middle East that supports gay rights, I've got to ask, what about the gay rights of all the Palestinians you just killed in Gaza? And that's where this, this uh, joining, the, joining the boycott movement comes from is, I think, Queer, queer rights aren't divisible from human rights. Queer rights aren't divisible from uh, social justice. And we know that from the South African experience. And for me to make a film about South African history and then not honor that tradition became impossible for me. People have, people have argued for engagement for 20, 30 years. And look where it's got us. It got us Gaza. So I think for many of us, the line was drawn in the sand. It's not that Gaza was the worst. There have been worse, but there have been worse atrocities, worse massacres, but some sort of some sort of line was reached in the sand. So many promises broken, so many lives lost. Some some sort of stance has to be taken, and again, it's that connection between the South Africa, the story of South Africa that I'm telling, and the current moment. And in the 80s, it was for a while. We all forget this. It was wildly unpopular to boycott South Africa. Exactly the same critiques were made. Why don't you engage the wonderful uh, whites of South Africa who were also fighting apartheid? And the answer then, as it should be now, is, well, no, we're joining the South Africans who are calling for boycott. We're joining the Israelis who are calling for boycott because that scene is the only thing, the only peaceful means right now that can actually have an effect on an Israeli state that's otherwise demonstrated, com gets completely out of control. The new... Uh, it, it, the new uh, regime of Netanyahu and his minister, uh, f utterly frightening in terms of what their designs are uh, and their, their further aggressions against the Palestinian people. So I think, it's, I think a line's been drawn in the sand right now.